Just a week after the tourist trophy, we went to Monza for the Italian Grand Prix. The drivers paid lip service to fuel economy. They were driving no, not a new, smaller still Cooper, but BP midget cars powered by tiny two-stroke engines. In practice, the major concern for all the Grand Prix teams had been tyre wear. The fast Monza circuit and the hot weather were destroying tyres. Moss's mechanic, Alf Francis, had fitted knock-on hubs to the rear of the Cooper in anticipation of a pit stop, but then found it was the left front tyre that was wearing the worst. The Astons qualified only 16th and 17th. Salvadori was still wearing bandages after the fire at Goodwood. The revered Enzo Ferrari made his customary visit to Monza. The commendatore is seen at Grand Prix only once a year, and that's practice for the Italian Grand Prix. Moss had qualified the Rob Walker Cooper Climax on pole. Second was the Ferrari of Tony Brooks, and third was Jack Brabham in the Works Cooper Climax. The Ferraris of Gurney, Hill, and Jean de Bien were fourth, fifth, and sixth. If any circuit was to favor the Ferrari, it was Monza. They had more power, but they didn't have the Coopers road holding. The Walker team discussed their tyre strategy. Could Sterling add a second to his Portuguese victory, I wondered. When the flag dropped, blue smoke poured from Brooks's Ferrari. His race was already over. Sterling took the early lead, but by lap two, the order was Phil Hill, Moss, Gurney, Brabham, and then a long gap to Shell, Jean de Bien, Ireland and Allison. The Astons were going better than they had in practice, but were still well down. Soon Moss was tightly sandwiched between the Ferraris of Hill and Gurney. Sterling had brief spells in the lead, but was generally happy to be in the slipstream of a powerful Ferrari. The third Ferrari of Allison joined this trio. Brabham had dropped to fifth. On lap 33, the leader, Phil Hill, pitted for tyres. In the next few laps, the other Ferraris all did likewise. After the Ferrari pit stops, Moss held a good lead over Hill and Brabham, who'd been promoted to third. The Ferrari team expected Moss to pit, but he didn't. He cheekily tucked into the slipstream of Allison's Ferrari instead of lapping it. The wily Alf Francis had borrowed a sports car tyre from a Lotus Elite that had crashed out of one of the supporting races. This tyre had a full eight millimetres of tread, which Sterling was now desperately trying to conserve. David Brown was unimpressed. Salvadori had retired with engine trouble and Shelby was two laps behind the leaders. By running at a pace fast enough to prevent the Ferraris catching him, but slow enough to conserve his tyres, Sterling Moss won a convincing tactical victory, 47 seconds ahead of Phil Hill's Ferrari. Brabham in third also drove the race without stopping. So with only the US Grand Prix remaining, Brabham led the championship with 31 points from Moss with 25 and a half and Brooks with 23.